Alright guys, so this is the latest iteration of my No Weld uh, DIY Rock Crusher. Um, made some pretty significant changes from the original video that I posted a couple of years ago. Um, so I'll kind of go through those and kind of the step by step of how I built this. Uh, what materials I used, uh, some problems I had along the way, and some suggestions I would make um, for those of you who are looking to make something similar. Um, so to start with, uh, again, this is a, a no weld rock crusher, and the main piece I had to find to get started was the circular housing. Um, what I ended up finding was a kitchen pot from like Canadian Tire Hardware Store. Uh, I cut off the top of it, so I think it's about two and a half inches deep. Um, cut off the handle as well. This one has a thick bottom, which is really good, um, but very thin sides. And pretty much all pots you find, most of them are going to have very thin sides unless they're really expensive. Um, so what I decided to do was make a replaceable liner that you can see here. Uh, these are plates of 1 8 inch thick steel. Uh, I think these are 3 quarters of an inch wide. Um, so one of the things I would suggest is using pieces that are a little bit wider than that, so you don't have to make as many. Uh, fewer cuts, fewer holes you have to drill, fewer screws that you need. Um, so it'll save you a lot of time if you do maybe one inch or one and a quarter inch. Uh, if you get much wider than that, then the outside shell won't press against it and close the gaps. So you'll end up with gaps, obviously, if you're trying to put something that's uh, flat against something circular and then you get material built up. Um, then for the little piece up here where the inlet is, I cut that piece of steel out of the side of an old propane tank. Um, so the steel there is just a little bit thinner than one eighth of an inch, um, but it was easy to kind of shape to the right size and I could cut a hole out of it um, and make a bigger piece. Um, so instead of using flat bar like this, you could technically use uh, more sections like that and have some longer rounded pieces there so you don't have to cut as many. Uh, in the future I might look to do something like that once these wear out. Um, but one of the great things about this is uh, most, um, most crushers that you buy are just a single ring of steel and if they wear down you have to either weld onto them or completely replace them. Um, this way whatever plates start to wear first you can just pop those out and put some new ones on. Um, for my crusher the rocks come in here and the chain spins this way so the full size rocks uh, impact over here first. Uh, so this is the spot that takes most of the beating. Uh, so I imagine these will probably have to be replaced a lot sooner than these ones. Uh, I just have some lock nuts on the back of these to, to hold the screws and the plates in place. And then for my feed tube uh, this is just some sort of PVC pipe, uh, two angles. Uh, I suggest for a feed tube you have, you know, at least one or two bends in there um, so rocks don't come shooting straight out and hit you in the face. At least this way if rocks are going to come flying out, they have to hit a couple of these sides first and uh, slow down quite a bit. And I usually have a thick leather glove on and cover that with my hand when the rocks are actually uh, crushing in motion. Um, so the center piece here that does the crushing Basically, I, I cut another little plate of that steel out of the side of the propane tank. I drilled a 5 eighths of an inch thick hole, sorry, wide hole, um, to accommodate this 5 eighths of an inch bolt. Uh, I could then cut two smaller holes so I can fit some chain links in here. Uh, nice thing about this is I can rotate the chain links like that, so when one side gets worn down, like you can see this one's been pretty worn down, I can switch it up and use the fatter end there so I can kind of get both ends a uh, view set of the, out of the chain here so I don't have to make as many links. And then, I don't know if you can really see it, but uh, back in there I have a um, piece of a coupling nut, uh, which are usually about that long, but I cut it down about in half uh, to cover up the rest of the thread of the bar here. Uh, and then it, there's a 5 eighths of an inch thick hole through the bottom of my uh, pot. Uh, and that's to accommodate this right here. So this is my angle grinder. This is what I'm going to use to power it. Um, the bolt on here is a threaded sort of 5 eighths of an inch bolt. Um, other angle grinders, bigger ones, might have like 3 quarters of an inch, uh, in which case you'd have to replace all this hardware with 3 quarters of an inch as well. This is just a lock nut. And in my previous, um, my previous versions of this, I didn't have this big threaded bar. I just basically stuck this through the bottom, through the bottom of the pot and into the crusher chamber and then use the coupling nut to attach directly on uh, to that without using uh, an extra bar like this. But what I wanted to do with this version that's very different from the previous one is make use of some bearings. Um, so I have a bearing on the top plate that comes on here and I have a bearing on the back side here as well. Uh, so this threaded rod goes right through, through the bearing. I then have the sort of other half of the coupling nut attached here and this coupling nut 
is what will secure the angle grinder uh, to the rest of the rock crusher. Then I have a couple angled bars here that are just kind of bolted on to this wood plate. Uh, and that's kind of helps me to, to secure the, the angle grinder on there. Um, also a bit of a change is previously the back plate and this were sort of two separate pieces and I just squeezed them all together. Um, but the problem I had there was if I didn't quite center this properly, the spinning bar would, would rub against the side uh, and cause a lot of vibration. And that's what happened last time. I actually broke the back piece off. Um, so now this has been cemented on here so we don't have to worry about that. And then I just have some uh, quarter inch threaded bar pieces, uh, one in each corner with a lock nut on the back to secure it. Uh, and that is what I'm gonna use to secure my top plate on using some of these simple brass wing nuts. Um, so yeah, again, I didn't have to, to weld anything to build this. Uh, mine kind of goes in this direction. I don't have an outlet port on my crusher. Um, that's something I could consider doing in the future, maybe replace one of these bars with some sort of outlet hole. Um, but what I simply do is turn the crusher on, throw a handful or two of rock in the crusher, um, let it spin around for a couple seconds, turn it off, and I just tip it upside down uh, and dump the crushed material out, and it's ready to put some, some new material in. So I don't have to sort of remove this plate on and off every time I put a handful of rock in there. I just kind of feed it in and out using the same, same feed tube. Uh, one problem I still have is I still get a little bit of vibration when I run this. Um, this spins, you know, quite nicely and straight between when it's between the two bearings. Um, but I think the problem is where the coupling nut attaches to the angle grinder. I've tried changing this, changing this a few times, um, but it's ever so slightly off center. Um, so it does create a bit of a wobble and I'm not too sure um, what I'm going to do about that or how I'm going to fix it. Um, but for now, I think the vibration is low enough that I can keep crushing and it's not too big of a deal. Again, that's why I kind of decided to, to get these, um, to get these bearings on. And since I'm not welding and I didn't want to do extra bolt holes here, I just used some JB weld uh, to secure it on and this stuff's uh, really strong. So I'm pretty confident that's gonna stay on okay. Uh, and this plate of steel, uh, I think I had to buy like a one foot by one foot piece. Um, this is a seven inch by seven inch piece. Um, so it was uh, not too difficult to cut and drill some holes through. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, and so the diameter of this as well, if you're wondering what size kitchen pot to look for, uh, mine is about six inches, so I would suggest kind of five and a half inches to six inches. Um, what you want is once you have your plates there, you want to build your centerpiece so that the diameter of everything is just such that the chains have just a little bit of clearance um, with, the, with the side plates there. So you can see my chain is not quite touching. Uh, and that'll let, and since they're loose here, if there's big rocks, this bends back so it can let big rocks pass through so you don't have to worry about any rock jams. Um, yeah, so the chain links are pretty easily replaceable. Um, the side plates also pretty easily replaceable. And again, I was able to build all this without having to weld anything. So I will get this all sealed back up, find some rocks to crush and show you what that looks like. Uh, so one more thing I forgot to add, uh, on the inside of the back plate, I cut a ring of sort of welcome mat carpet, I guess it is. Um, around here uh, just to help make a tight seal or an airtight seal with the um, with the crusher housing so I don't get a lot of dust escaping um, otherwise it does get quite dusty and of course when I was cutting this I didn't do a very perfect job of cutting it straight you can see it's a bit bit wobbly so having a thicker piece of, of stiff carpeting here helps kind of seal up some of those gaps uh, to attach this on I just use I think a mix of I don't know, some glue or some JB weld. It's all kind of dirty, I can't really see what's on there. Um, so I don't really want to pick it up from here because it's not on there super tight. I think it actually might just be some glue and silicone, um, but it's easy to pick enough, uh, pick up from, from the bars back here. And uh, that's kind of why I let the center bar stick out as well to act as another handle. So to prep the, uh, the sample for the mill, I just bash it up with a sledgehammer uh, using a brick and a box so the pieces don't go flying everywhere. And I got to get it down to about three quarter inch minus in size so it doesn't jam. And then I've just been using this craft dinner box to put a couple handfuls in. That way while the mill is spinning, I can just shake my hand and slowly feed it in.
just finished putting a second sample through the crusher here. Uh, this one went way better than the first one. Um, made really quick work of this material. Super powdery, um, pretty pretty even crush size too. The last one had some like talcum powder, some bigger pieces. So, um, you know, even though this back, um, which kind of the back bearing here is kind of loose and kind of shakes around a bit, uh, it's actually working pretty, pretty well. So I'm gonna keep going with this for now, uh, crush a few more samples, and then uh, I'll pop this thing open and kind of show you what the chains look like. So we've got just a couple closing comments, I guess, on the rock crusher now that I've used it to crush um, a number of samples already. I don't know how many pounds I put through it, maybe like 10 pounds, something like that. Uh, the one thing that's still really bothering me, though, is um, the way I connect the threaded bar that serves as the shaft to the angle grinder using the coupling nut. Um, even with this backstop piece here um, on the angle grinder, I don't know if when this lines up, it's just attaching onto the thread of the end grinder a little bit crooked when it locks in, or <clears throat> if it's the bolt that goes into the um, lock nut and maybe that's not going in straight, or maybe it's just kind of an old angle grinder and I've used it to crush a lot of rocks and things and maybe the bolt sticking out is ever so slightly off center uh, and that's causing the vibration. Again, that vibration that actually kind of broke my, um, my bearing loose a little bit so it kind of rattles in here. But that turns out to be okay. It still crushes fine when I do it. Uh, that's probably the one thing that does bother me. Uh, the other thing is the amount of dust that shoots out of here. Um, I think because this uh, bearing is no longer cemented on, uh, air gets in here when it's spinning and shoof, shoots out the top just like a water pump. Um, of course, when I put my hand on it, that's fine. But as I'm feeding samples, I get a lot of dust. I'm not too, too keen on that. Um, but other than that, uh, it seems to be working really well. Uh, again, I probably crushed at least 10 pounds of rocks in this iteration, and I don't know if you can see the chains in there, but they're still in pretty good shape, um, so I can continue using those and, and don't need to switch any yet. Uh, the plates themselves are uh, also in pretty good shape in there, so I won't need to be changing those anytime soon. Uh, so you can see the inside here. Obviously, it's a little dirty, but um, they're not really wearing down at all, uh, and the chains here also in good shape. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Overall, quite satisfied. I'm gonna keep crushing with this, and if I make any more modifications, I'll do another update video. And uh, here's a sneak peek at what I'm working on next. Uh, working on a little shaker table here. So, um, you know, follow along, and I uh, should have a video on that pretty soon as well. Right on, thanks for watching. And uh, if you guys got any questions, comments, or suggestions on how I can fix that problem I have with the wobble, uh, please let me know.